Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the broken, inept, incompetent and incomprehensible family court. And what I will be exposing in this vlog is totally shocking. So get a stiff drink to hand, you are going to need it and make yourselves comfortable as I explain why family court judges are mostly useless and have very little authority and powers. But before I do, I simply must run my excellent introduction. I am Philip Kedge, a retired police chief inspector, the director of the Mackenzie Friend UK network and fearless family court vlogger. In all my amazing vlogs, my views and opinions are entirely my own. Now, if you would like to find a trusted Mackenzie friend or have a one-to-one -one case review with myself, then contact me today at contactphil.co.uk. So, your ex has stopped contact, citing spurious allegations of abuse motivated by hate, revenge, hurt feelings, unfettered emotions and irrational anxieties. Now, I'm not talking about the 20% of cases where there is clearly abhorrent domestic abuse and coercive control that we all reasonably understand, that of course needs serious safeguarding interventions. I am talking about the vast majority of cases that involve nothing more than mudslinging bollocks made by resident parents who are mostly mothers, designed to throw the non-resident parent, who are mostly fathers, under the family court bus to reduce, restrict, minimise and deny child contact. On your ex stopping contact, you apply to the family court to urgently restore contact and the loving bonds with your beautiful, wonderful, innocent children who you love unconditionally with every ounce of your being. You hold that belief that it will only be a short period of time before a judge will end the clear and obvious malicious weaponising of the children and reunite you. That truth, justice and common sense will prevail in the face of such outrageous behaviour by your ex in stopping contact. Well... It's time to take your beliefs, hopes and dreams and flush them down the toilet as you are about to enter the madness of the family court, an overflowing cesspit of hate commonly resided over by judges from Planet Stupid who have very little powers to do anything about it. Now keep that stiff drink in hand as I explain further. You see, at the first hearing dispute resolution appointment, your judge has limited powers to reinstate any contact. This is based on two main reasons. Firstly, you have absolutely no rights in law to have contact with your child. In layperson terms, it is the child's right to have a relationship with you if safe to do so. I bet you didn't know that, so all the talk around father's rights and father's rights campaigns is a total waste of time. You may have parental responsibility, but that excludes the right to child contact. Secondly, the mad, deranged and unfit for purpose family court system is an adversarial process. Now that means, again, in layperson terms, that judges can only make orders in relation to contact either where there is consent by both parties or after evidence has been heard at contested hearings. Now, at the first hearing, the judge does not hear any evidence to enable them to make orders around contact. The first hearings are dispute resolution hearings, where judges decide whether allegations of harm and abuse may be relevant and then applies practice directions 12J, or whether a Section 7 report is required by CAFCAS. What they don't do is to hear contested evidence in relation to contact. That means that 
where there is no current direct child contact, interim contact orders can really only be made if CAFCAS and the court considers it safe to do so and the resident parent agrees. Let's have some fun and role play the madness of what may happen in these type of situations. The next to useless family court judge turns to the all too often sick in the head family lawyer who is representing the resident parent and who has absolutely no professional duty of care to any child. How disgraceful is that? And asks, does your client now agree to interim direct contact. The sick in the head family lawyer takes instructions from the hateful, vengeful, emotionally challenged and irrationally anxious resident parent who are mostly mothers and then replies to the judge with a resounding no. And that apparently, according to mum, the children are scared of their father and don't want to see him. The next to useless and pointless judge then turns to the non-resident parent of the mostly fathers and says, sorry, but I'm totally useless and have no authority and limited powers to force interim contact. Instead, I am going to ask Kafkas to do a section seven report, which will only take about three months to complete we can then all come back to court in three, four or even five months time as we are so busy to see what Kafkas recommends. And the judge continues with reassuring words for the father and says, in the meantime, because I'm powerless to order contact, try and forget about your children. Put them to the back of your mind. Just carry on with your life until either mum agrees with some contact or until I can make a decision after I have read the Kafkas report, set a date for the final hearing and heard all the evidence. By which time, of course, your children may have been further manipulated to fear and even hate you and to never want to see you again, which actually makes my job easier because I just listen to their wishes and feelings. If they don't want to see you, I'm not going to force them. That concludes the hearing today, and you can see why I get paid £120,000 a year. Next case. Now, you may be thinking that that was just a ridiculous comedy sketch. Well, you would be wrong. Granted that the family court is one big joke, but that situation is very common in the family court. And I bet that many of you watching have or are experiencing something along these lines. This all leads me to now introduce the ringmaster of this family court circus. The one and only president of the family court himself, Mr. Dressiuppi, Sir Andrew McFarlane, perhaps the most ineffective invisible leader in the history of the family court. I see a legacy of wasted opportunities, an inept approach towards family court modernisation and reform, with a strategic vision worthy only of a D-grade law student. Sir Andrew, your time must surely now be up. It's time to step down and hang up your ridiculous looking wig, dressing gown and frilly little lacy bib. So it's time to draw this to a close. After all, what more can I say other than if you are in the grips of the madness of the family court and are being thrown under the family court bus, then please contact me straight away. Don't delay at contactphil.co.uk. Your one-stop shop for all of your family court solutions-based needs and where you can even book a one-to-one -one case review with myself. Until next time, stay strong.